What I want to think about now is consciousness. Now, if you've just watched the previous video, you'll know that the brain is divided into these lobes. So we have the frontal, parietal, occipital and temporal lobes. And underneath that we have the brainstem and the cerebellum. The brainstem being continuous with the spinal cord. Now, the brain, of course, is a complete mystery. Not a complete mystery, we know a lot about it, but some of the fundamental things we actually don't know. So, how does the brain generate consciousness? What is consciousness? We do know the brain contains 100,000 million nerve cells. 100,000 million. That's the Villanor Ramachandri figure who was one of the leading researchers onto neurobiology and disorders of the brain. 100,000 million nerve cells. And of course these nerve cells are massively interconnected. Each individual neuron will make between 1,000 and 10,000 synaptic interconnections with other neurons giving the individual neurons massive interconnectivity. And somehow the emergent properties from the electrical activity in the neurons and the chemical activity in the synapses, somehow from that you emerge, your awareness and your consciousness. Now, while we don't know exactly what's going on here, it is true that throughout the brain stem there's a large interconnected network of very small nerve fibres. It goes slightly into the base of the brain as well. And uh, th this is called, th these nerve fibres are called the reticular activating system. The reticular activating system. Now, reticular means a net. A reticulum is a, a net. Um, it's Latin. So, we have this large, complicated network of fine interconnected neurons, largely in the brain stem to a little degree in the bottom of the cerebrum. And they're relatively small, well, they're very small nerve fibers, but very finely interconnected. And yet the area that they're in is not a lot bigger than your thumb. Your brain stem is a relatively small mass of tissue. And this reticular activating system is what generates consciousness. So what is it that differentiates you from a tree? Well, the answer is your consciousness generated by the reticular activating system. How it does that, no idea, but, but it does. And the reason I believe this is because I've seen many patients with brainstem death and they might have some heart function and we can ventilate them to give them respiratory function. But to all intents and purposes, these patients appear largely to be dead. It's just that they have physiological functioning because it's the brain stem that's generating the consciousness. It's probably more complicated than that, but that is, that is basically true. And the other thing that I found very convincing about this was I remember talking to a patient who had a brain stem stroke. So he'd had his brain stem occluded by a thrombosis, he had a brain stem stroke. But he recovered and woke up. And he'd been unconscious with this brain stem stroke for about a week. And for him, when I talked to him, it was amazing that that week simply didn't exist. It just wasn't part of his life because his brain stem wasn't working. So consciousness is generated by the brain stem, 
But of course we move, we feel, we move our eyes, we think, we see, we hear, we taste. All these are functions of the cerebrum. So in order to see, you must be able to see with your cerebral cortex, but of course you need to be aware that you're seeing. You need the consciousness. So what happens is that there's white fibres, white axonal fibres, go from the brain stem to all parts of the brain. Radiating out to all parts of the brain. And in a sense that is transmitting the consciousness from there to here where we feel. So when I feel, when I shake someone's hand, I can feel it and I'm aware of it. I am conscious of it. So we need the two components. We need the brain up here in the, remember the sensory cortex is up here, isn't it? This is the sensory cortex in the front of the parietal lobe. We need the sensory cortex to generate the tactility, but that's no good unless we have awareness of it. And that's provided by the consciousness in the brain stem. So the consciousness is generated by the brain stem and the awareness of consciousness is experienced throughout the cerebrum. And it's the interaction between these two which gives the emergent behavior of our conscious experience. Because if someone has a head injury, and they damage some of these fibres, then they will be unconscious for a period of time. Could be seconds, could be years, depends on the degree of injury to these axonal fibres, these white fibres that are going from the area where the consciousness is generated in the brainstem via the reticular activating system to all parts of the cerebrum where it is experienced. So that is just something about consciousness generation and the experience of consciousness.